And for more on Chinese soccer, we are joined here in our Beijing studio, Mr. Yan Qiang, a sports commentator and founder of Score Sport. And of course, uh, our ardent supporter when it comes to Chinese soccer yeah. <laughs> discussion. Yeah. Also in Beijing with us in the studio, Mr. Mark Dreyer, who is a uh, founder of China Sports Insider. Joining us from London, we're having uh, sports commentator and TV presenter Simon Pusey. Welcome to the Thrill of You, gentlemen. First of all, I have to ask you, Mr. Yan, what do you make of it? Uh, Mr. Lippi now become the national soccer team coach. Well, Chinese team is going to be much better, isn't it? Of course, you know, because <laughs> it looks better. You know, we have a, a, a well-known uh, top uh, professional football manager who won a World Cup 10 years ago and who has been very successful wherever he, uh, he ever coached. And he also, he... Uh, Led you know Guangzhou Evergrande to uh, the uh, championship of uh, Asian Champions League. You know he knows about China's football. Now you know the uh, national team is facing a, a great challenge of mm. uh, qualification of the uh, Russian 2018. So who else could be better than Marcelo Lippi? What do you think? Uh, well, Mark, uh, is this going to be the life-saving uh, figure for Chinese soccer team, Messier. national team? You know, look, I, I'd love to believe so, but I think I, I think we have to be realistic. It, it's it's I think it's too. How realistic late. do you want us to be? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Well, look, uh, you know, I, I think China is, is very very unlikely to qualify for the World Cup, given the current situation that's in with the matches that we've already had. Uh, they've hired Lippi. He he has a chance to try and turn it around, and and as you said, you know, who better than him to to at least give it a go? The problem is. Uh, from club management, you can buy in very good players and, and perhaps uh, you know do things that way. He he only has the right. players that he's given uh, that, that you know he can only try to get the best out of the current Chinese squad. So okay. they're not there yet. You know, hopefully in the future we will see improvements. But realistically, Mr. Yan put it very diplomatically, and you put it really clear. <laughs> okay, let's go to Simon. What about you? Any harsh words you want to share with us? Yeah, I agree with your, your last guest and where better to go um, than here in England if you want to see uh, a league that is um, spending a lot of money and bringing in big name players, but a, a, a national team that's, that's failing on the pitch. I mean, uh, I think a distinction needs to be drawn here by growing the game in China domestically with the domestic league and bringing in big name players and managers and the national team where that doesn't really help. We have a situation here in England where you've got so many stars playing in the Premier League mm. that English players don't really get a chance to make it into the teams. Um, and that obviously hurts the, the national team and then um, we as a national team do badly. And I think similar parallels need to be drawn in China in that it's not just about bringing players over from Syria and the Premiership to play um, in the domestic league. That may sort of raise the levels of interest, but will the national team actually benefit from that? I think um, it probably Probably won't. So okay. I think I agree. Marcelo Lippi is a great choice in the short term in terms of trying to turn things around, but in the longer term, you need to focus more on youth development. But uh, yeah, Mr. Yan, I mean, we need to at least have something to rally the spirit, or a person That's to why, rally why the I spirit. That's why I say it's a good thing. At That's least a good thing to now. begin with. Uh, but then the question is: Is it the system, or is it the foundation of players that we're lacking? Is the lack of a soccer education? It's everything. It's everything. Uh, it's kind well, of well, systematic help me. I failing. mean, Mr. Yan, you yourself been working in this circle for decades. I mean, and we've been talking about Chinese soccer for decades, if not more. Uh, what's going on here? What are the biggest obstacles that have been preventing us to do the right thing? It's, it's quite simple. You know, uh, I agree with. Uh, uh, our London friends uh, comment, you know, we need to strengthen you, you our youth development agree with because one there are not <laughs> enough <laughs> participants mm. in grassroots football, you know, talking about our real football population, how many people are playing, mm. you know, according to how some uh, uh, economics, you know, uh, currently, you know, if you, uh, the uh, kids from the age of 8 to uh, 15, you know, mm. we call that in the grassroots uh, area, maybe we're talking about figures like 50 thousands or sixty thousand six Are you zero. sure? I mean we got one point three. Who could million play regularly at least twice uh, twice a week, you know, to receive uh, proper, maybe improper mm -hmm. football training. You know, we have to grow that foundation. Otherwise, you know, even though football is 
so popular, has so <coughs> far-reaching uh, uh, social influence. You know, it's 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 been treated even more like an uh, entertainment show. Mm. The EPL might be a very good Truman show, but it's not really in um, incorporated with our daily life. Mm. Mark? I think it's about the expectation as well. You know, uh, all football fans, you know, Simon said in, in London, uh, as an England fan, you know, we, we expect England to win the World Cup. But realistically, it's not going to happen. China now realizes. We didn't expect the national team to win the World <laughs> Cup, by the way. We want them to enter but, but, into but to qualify, even but, the World but Cup. But again, again, yeah. it's the expectation that have been raised. I think objectively, China is, is roughly somewhere in, the, in between 50 and 100 in, in terms of world rankings. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably their current position. But to be in the World Cup, you probably have to be in the top 50. So China is not there yet. And you can't just manufacture players overnight. Mm -hmm. It's a 20-year process. You've got to start with the five-year-olds and then coach them the right way for 20 years. There is no shortcut. Mm -hmm. Lippi is coming for two years. So there's, a, there's only there's only so much he can um, do. But well, we, were, heard, we were once. We Lippis were once. contract ones. might be longer than two years. Oh. Right. You know, I heard you know today that uh, updated news that his uh, contract length might be to the next World Cup cycle. All so right. if it's a kind of four or five years ago, that might be be better. He could be kind of architect of our national team structure. But mm. Mr. Yan, you remember that moment, I'm sure, much clearer than Bora. I am. We're touring once Bora. we were there yeah. in the World Cup. Yeah. Remember, and it was also. We were not really there. <laughs> we were in <laughs> South Korea and Japan oh. because those two uh, Asian football piling uh, 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 well, pals. There they we were, go. We were, we were not in the qualification we stage. Were Never made it to there. Japan. Just okay. <laughs> that was also the time when we have a foreign coach, right? Yeah. If we talk about uh, Marcelo Lippi, he is really the tenth foreign coach to be hired by China's national football team. He's also the first Italian to head the team. But there are many others who have been working on the national team in China for soccer over there. Let's take a look. The first foreign coach for China's national team was Klaus Schlappner from Germany. Then there was Bob Houghton from the UK, Bora Milutinovic from Serbia, Ari Han from Holland, Vladimir Petrovic and Radimir Djukovic from Serbia, Jose Antonio Camacho from Spain, and Alain Perrin from France. Milutinovic is considered by many as the most popular. Well, see, we were there with one foreign coach for the national, for the World Cup. So can this one, Mr. Lippi, be the same, bringing China the same luck? Uh, not for Russian 2018, it's too mm. light, you know, because we lost too many uh, matches, we didn't gain enough spools. But uh, if you stay on this track, you know, the national team might have a chance in uh, Qatar, if the World Cup will still be in Qatar 20, 20, uh, 2022, mm. there might be a chance. And uh, that's still quite important. You know, we cannot say we just ignore the national team and we just focus all on youth development. You know, the national team's performance would be a great motivating uh, factor for all football business in China. Yes, indeed. Uh, Simon, we are not just talking about the reality of the Chinese soccer, but also how the rest of the world is looking at us. Of course, now you're working in London, still in fields of sports. Uh, how people react to uh, China spending a huge um, price tag on a foreign coach uh, uh, for its national team? Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, there are rumors every day in the papers in uh, in England about which next star uh, Chinese team is going to buy up at the moment. It's uh, Wayne Rooney. People are saying half a million a week for Wayne Rooney. Um, you know, Shane <laughs> Erickson is thinking about that. There are rumors all the time um, about players moving. And, and that's because, you know, so many players are being bought up. And I think a lot of leagues are a little bit worried that Ch the Chinese Super League is going to overtake places like the MLS in terms of sort of the, the interest and the number of people um, who are watching. So um, I think the, the fact that China have signed another foreign coach isn't that big a surprise. I think Marcelo Lippi's a, a great appointment. He, he sort of matches the experience of having um, Guangzhou Evergrande and having worked in China with the experience of winning the World Cup. It's the sort of perfect combination for the short term. Um, but yeah, I don't think um, the, the signing of another foreign coach is anything um, too much of a surprise, but I absolutely agree. It needs to be, um, you know, grassroots investment and, and we need to get sort of young children playing at the kind mm. of levels that young children play basketball and table tennis and ping pong um, in China for it really to work in the long term. Well, Mark, it's impossible to think that if we move a lot of factors, eventually it's not going to work. I mean, okay, we've got a top coach of the world, 
shall we say that? I think it, yeah. Mr. Lippi qualified sure, for that, yeah. certainly. Secondly, we've got the money to import as many foreign players as we want. Thirdly, Chinese business people are going global and even purchasing some of the most well-known yes. football clubs around the world. Certainly during this process, a lot of things can be learned and a lot of things can be shared. So you seem to have all of these very positive factors that are likely to lead Chinese soccer to a very bright future. So which stage are we at? Are these opportunities going to be eventually part of the eventual success? Well, I think you have to make a clear distinction between importing foreign stars and improving Chinese domestic right. players. I mean, they're training with better players in training. That can incrementally, you know, small amounts maybe improve Chinese players, but it's not going to make a dramatic difference. They certainly can't play for the Chinese team, at least not until they've been resident in China for five years, and that's a whole other question. Another issue, whether we should nationalize this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a whole de another debate. <laughs> and, and again, buying into Milan, buy, buying uh, clubs overseas in, in, in Europe, all over, top clubs, you know, again, does that really improve Chinese football? No. I would argue, no. Uh, absolutely. Like it's only said. good business. Yeah, so, so, so we're, again, we're agreeing, but, but you need to start with Chinese kids. It's too competitive to, to take a 15, 20 year old and, and just try yeah. to train them and make them into world class. Compare, player. Mr. Yang, yeah. if, if I could ask you, compare. I mean, if we're talking about Asian physique, then yeah. let's compare China to maybe Japan and South Korea, even DPRK yeah. in terms of the soccer level. Uh, so, where is China lacking behind all of these countries? Uh, I, can, I think Japan and Korea could be two great examples. You know, they incorporate football into their academic study of all schools, starting from the elementary uh, stage. And uh, you know, one factor is from the education system, the mm -hmm. schools. The other are the families. The families are backing their kids, you know, to participate in sport, especially in football. We got a lot of soccer fans in, in China. You know, we watching. got a lot of uh, yeah. soccer audience, yeah. mm -hmm. not really the soccer fans, and. In the, in the States, we know there was a term called soccer moms. So the moms would, do, would drive the kids to participate in sport, especially in soccer. But in China, we don't have them. We have all the teachers who are forbidden the kids to participate in, uh, in sport because, you know, you're from this kind of one kid family. Right. You cannot get injured. You know, if you want to participate in sport, you know, go back home and go with your parents. Do not do it in school. Mm -hmm. That's a kind of hard reality we're facing every day in China. Okay, I don't understand that, this, Mr. Yan. I mean, you talk about all of these details. These are the important, but we have a goal, right? I mean, China is very good at making plans, and we are very good at achieving all these plans. For example, about soccer, 2015, Chinese President Xi Jinping, together with other top Chinese leadership, already agreed we are going to have a superpower of Chinese soccer. Of course, this is a plan, but that has to be implemented step by step. Why can't we, uh, why aren't we seeing kids being organized? Why aren't we seeing uh, soccer places are being established? Uh, why can't we see yeah, it's more a change and more of the overall grassroots circumstances. trainers, it takes years coaches? To change that. I think we are seeing a change, you know, but it just takes 20 years. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, like there's hundreds of millions of Brazilian kids who grow up from the age of basically one playing football throughout their years. So yeah. you can't take it again. It can't take a 20 year old Chinese kid and expect them to suddenly be good no matter how much money you throw into his training. You know, you have to start early and that just takes a huge amount of time. All right. And added to that, you've got all these social changes, you know, moving away from the academic pressure into sport and, and that's a, a cultural change. Mm. I think we are seeing those changes and, and people understand that we have to start early, but again, it takes time. So we, we cannot uh, yeah. ask, demand the answers now. We, we really want to know, you know, or, or focus on, you know, could we get more kids to participate in the sport and enjoy the sport? Okay, Simon, what's your take about that? Yeah, well, I'd say something that hasn't been mentioned yet is a little bit of the, the culture change that happens in China. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, a different culture, obviously, and it takes a long time to understand that culture and to, and to adapt to it. And it, how many Chinese players can you name who are playing in other leagues around the world? Yeah. It's far less than in Japan and South Korea. If you were to have more Chinese players going and playing in other leagues, they could bring back those ideas and that influence and, and the way that things happen in those teams mm -hmm. back into China and back into the national 
national team. I think that that's something that we shouldn't sort of understate because it's a, it's another thing that happens here in England. We don't have that many players going and playing in other leagues, and I think mm. it's really good experience. If if Chinese players could go and do that, they could get experience, bring it back, and they could really influence the team and how things operate、um, on a national level. Well, that's also happened to some of the basketball players. Didn't we see that、uh, with Yao Ming and some of the others? But has that really,、uh, you know, in a way, bring in dramatic changes to the basketball system in China? No, that's no, a big no, question mark. So th- that's one question. The other thing is,、uh, we see earlier some footages of Chinese little kids playing soccer. So lovely over there, so cute. But having said that, though, there were a time. Remember Rong Zhixing, his generation,、yeah. 30 years ago, he was. You are joking.、Helping. You couldn't have watched the heel.、Uh, well, I, I, I read a little bit of history about soccer. So <laughs> he was trying to make an effort. He was one of the most well-known Chinese soccer yeah. players yeah. on the national team at the time,、yeah. and he retired. He said, "I'm not going to, to be official. I am going to do this grassroots soccer training." As a result of that. It seems spread around the that, country. That, that so, so wh- what、ago. is happening? Yes, what is happening over there then, and why now can't, Mr. Yan? I think it's a very sad system,、uh, systematic crumpling, you know,、uh, because you know,、uh, before that, you know,、uh, in the 80s or 70s, sport is just a kind of political tool of the central government, and、uh, football is the first sport which opened up, you know, throughout the systemic、uh, reform. Yes, indeed. So called to give the sport back to society, but at that time, society were not major enough to really to、uh, to take this sport as its own.、Mm-hmm. So there were so many conflicts, you know, between we could say two systems: the planning、uh, system, economic system, and this kind of free market system. Mm. So football suffered, but also benefited from the clashes of these two systems. You know, maybe I'm, I'm talking nonsense, but that, that, that's the hard I truth. I don't think you're talking about nonsense. You're talking something very important here, Mark. Briefly, I, I mean, I, there's, there's a lot. There's so many different issues. One, one thing I would th- say is is that、uh, Simon mentioned just importing,、uh, exporting Chinese players overseas.、Mm. That has been tried quite recently, actually. It didn't work because the Chinese players are not yet. At that level to benefit,、yeah. mm. there's one young player who's doing quite well in the Dutch league, but it's not a strong league. You know,、right. can he really carry all of Chinese football's hopes on his shoulders? He can't. So, but、yes. can anyone really carry Chinese、uh, soccer dear dream? Lippy, 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 let's get to well, the point. Oh wow! Okay. Well, before we go, I know this is going to be an everlasting topic because we are looking at Chinese soccer. Very up close.、Uh, this is one of the biggest sport for this country. Before we go, final word from every one of you. What to do next, Simon? Let's start with you briefly. We're all going to be in agreement with this.、Uh, <laughs> grassroots、uh, football in China needs more investment and more time. And I think what's important. Is that children need to have fun, All right? right?、Uh, the the leagues that do really well, the teams that do really well. You think of Brazil; they play for fun from an early age. They play to have fun. Try not to make it too serious. Like we need to win the World Cup by、right. this date. I, children I just、it. need to have fun, and it needs to grow <laughs> like that. <laughs> I can see Simon very excited about this topic. Very important topic, as you know.、And、Mark, one sentence. You are only allowed. Okay, for me, I would just plead patience. This is a twenty-year plan. Ten years down the line. You're not going to see massive changes, even if everything is working. So please wait for 20 years. All right, Chang, Mr. Yan.、Uh, gather all kids in all schools to play football, free, to, free,、uh, you know, freely. All right, that's a big project you're talking about <laughs> over there, sir. I have to say, Yan Chang, Mark Dwyer, and also <laughs>、yeah. Simon Pusey. Really appreciate, gentlemen, for this interview for being with us. All the best, Chinese soccer.